one more person's been injured at his job. Unfortunately, these accidents at work are happening every day. I wonder who it was this time. Perhaps a painter fell from a scaffold. Or a waterside worker was injured by a load that slipped out of a sling. Or a metal worker got a hot spark in his eye. Perhaps a man had his hand crushed in an unguarded power press. A woman caught her hair in an old drilling machine, maybe, or even a modern one. Perhaps a motor mechanic, while he was blowing up a tyre, was injured by the flying locking rim of a wheel. In fact, it could have been anyone at almost any job. This could be you. Because in a little country like New Zealand, about 40,000 people are injured at work every year, more than the entire population of Hamilton. That means about 160 every working day. There are nearly 20 injuries every hour. In other words, one person is injured every three minutes. Now let's look at the more serious cases. Three people every day are so badly injured that they're maimed in some degree for the rest of their lives. Every fourth day, here in New Zealand, someone dies as the result of injuries received at work. All these accidents cause the country to lose three million men days of production every year. and they cost us about eight million pounds. And besides this, there's the personal suffering which every accident causes, suffering which we'd usually give anything to avoid. Yes, we've a real accident problem and it's serious. To overcome it, we've got to understand the nature of the problem. That's what this film's about. First, why do these accidents happen? Machines are responsible for many of them, and machines are being used more and more today. But they cause only a small proportion of accidents, less than one in five as a matter of fact, though some are serious ones. The fact is that accidents can happen to anyone at work, wherever we may work. They may happen in a shop. In a milk treatment plant. In a factory, any kind of factory, large or small, where the housekeeping is bad, where waste is not cleaned up, where saws and planing machines are unguarded, where the hazards of sharp tools are not always appreciated. Accidents may happen on a farm, in a hospital. They may happen where people work in the bush, or in the city, or even in a quiet, orderly office. Accidents could happen outdoors on construction work, or indoors in a warehouse. Yes, accidents can happen anywhere. The danger of accidents is present wherever people have to handle materials. And of course, people have to handle materials in nearly every job there is. Things that stay still generally don't hurt anybody. But when things are on the move, watch out, whether it's cases. Or cement. Steel. Wool. Paper. Chemicals or anything else. Where materials of any sort have to be handled, there's danger. There's a hazard present wherever people use unguarded machines, or use hand tools, or use the wrong tool for the job, or climb stairs, or even come down them. Sometimes there's trouble ahead when you just walk about on the floor, when you try to avoid an object instead of moving it. But seriously, accidents can happen to every one of us, whatever the work we do. 
we may suffer all sorts of injuries. Our eyes may be damaged, if they're unprotected, by chips that fly, or acids that splash. There are about 1,300 eye injuries every year. Acids burn terribly. Our work may be a danger to our feet. Boxes or crates or drums may crush them. Or we may trip over things left lying about. Or poking out. The most common hazard is to our hands and fingers, where a machine isn't properly guarded or where the guard is left off. Our fingers and hands, our most important and irreplaceable tools, may be torn by jagged objects, burned by hot ones, cut by sharp ones. We may even lose our hands or fingers altogether, and with them all our skill, all our training, our ability to enjoy our sports and recreations, our capacity to earn our own living and care for our families. We can injure our backs too, for example, by lifting the wrong way. Yes, there are hazards wherever we may work. Hazards in dozing clay. Hazards in making hay. Hazards to people's heads. Hazards in milking sheds. Hazards in cutting chops. Hazards on building tops. It can happen to you. But we can do something about it. And that's just the point. Besides the fact that we're all possible candidates for accidents, we can all do something too to prevent ourselves and other people from having accidents. Accidents don't just happen, they are caused. And some of the causes you've seen in this film. Unguarded machinery, unsafe use of tools, worn or broken equipment, wrong work methods, not doing the job the safe way, not wearing protective equipment causes accidents, so does poor lighting, and bad housekeeping. If we remove these causes, there'll be no accidents. That's common sense, isn't it? Whose job is it to remove these causes? The managers, perhaps you say, and you may be right. But the manager says that's what he pays the supervisors and foremen for, and certainly they've got an important job to do. The foreman says that if only the workers would cooperate, he might get somewhere. And you know, he may be right too. And the workman, he doesn't often even think about accidents. He says nothing's happened to him so far. As a matter of fact, and it's obvious if you think about it, this business of stopping accidents is the job of management and supervisors and staff all cooperating together. Each has got to do his part if we're going to reduce these 40,000 accidents a year. We must all do something, because the number of accidents is increasing every year. Let's see, then, what we can do. First, there's management's part. Good housekeeping is an essential thing. That is, the workplace must be well ordered. Clean, clear floor space is efficient and will naturally prevent accidents. Clear aisles or roads. Men and goods can then move about freely and safely. They won't fall against things, bump into things. Things won't fall on men's heads, and you won't have claims for compensation. So have clear, well-marked aisles. And good housekeeping includes clear benches and work areas. If we get into the habit of putting tools and things we're not using away in their drawers and racks, we'll be able to see what we're doing and work comfortably and safely. Good housekeeping also includes orderly stacking of products, of spares, of raw materials. And the time taken in organizing and maintaining this kind of order and efficiency is of course made up by better tempers, better work, more profits and fewer accidents. 
And the same thing applies to tools. See if you can't organize something like this, everything in its place instead of being somewhere around. No lost tools, no lost time, no making one tool do where another should have been used, and consequently, no accidents. We don't toss rubbish on the floor at home, and we shouldn't do it at work. We should have bins for waste. Will this prevent accidents, you say? Rubbish lying around has caused a lot of very serious ones. And here's another thing. When space is short, things get stacked where they block doorways and exits. Then fire, panic, tragedy. Keep all exits clear. You never know when they'll be needed in a hurry. And now for something else. Lighting. Here's a factory well lit by ordinary daylight. Do you need more windows? Do the ones you've got need cleaning? Dirty windows cut down the light by up to 50%. If you use artificial light, make sure that's efficient, like this. A dingy, dark workplace can have all kinds of undesirable effects on the attitudes and feelings of staff. And of course, a bright, cheerful place can have the opposite effect. And to avoid accidents, people must be able to see what they're doing. Sometimes a light on the point where you're working makes a great difference to the work you're doing, to the time it takes to do it, and of course to the risk you run of having an accident. Where a machine is flooded with light, like this lathe, the risk in operating it is cut to a minimum. Now probably the most important point, all machinery needs guarding. Belts and pulleys and couplings are dangerous. They can catch clothing or limbs. And in a hundredth of a second, where there was a gently humming belt, there's tragedy. Belts are dangerous. The law requires all belts to be guarded. Gears are dangerous too. If you think for a moment, you can imagine what these gears could do to a man's fingers or hands. See that gears are properly guarded and never leave the guard off. But the disguised killers that look so innocent are shafts. They run true and steady and often silently and almost invisibly. But suddenly, without warning, they can catch and twist, rend and tear. They can cause the most ghastly injuries. Shafts are dangerous things. Guard them. Safety equipment can save many injuries, but it's no use unless we use it. Sometimes it may seem a nuisance, gets in the way. Goggles, for instance, we often mislay them, or we just can't be bothered with them. That's true, you know. This lad, though, won't spend the rest of his life blind because of an accident in the machine shop. Reparators sometimes very comfortable, but if we realized what some fumes and dusts can do to our lungs, we'd wear respirators. Guards should be adjusted to the job, however short. Don't push that guard away. Look, uh, use a push stick. There. He gambled nothing against his fingers and lost. Now let's turn to something else. Last year, 2,000 people injured their backs. It's very easy to get strains, sprains, slip discs, hernias by lifting things the wrong way. By keeping your knees straight like this, you bend your back. Stretch it, strain it. See the tremendous strain on your spine and your back muscles when you lift incorrectly. See the risk you run of doing yourself a permanent injury. Now the right way is to stand with your legs about 12 inches apart. Keep your back straight and do the lifting with your legs. Your leg and thigh muscles are big. They can take it. The less you bend and stretch your back, the less chance of injury. You'd be surprised how many people get injured by using the wrong tool for the job. This wrench for this job, for instance. And now he tries to get extra leverage with a length of pipe. The wrench slips or breaks, and there's the risk of cracked fingers or a strained back. Get the right tool. That's better, a wheel brace. Report things that you can see are unsafe. Don't wait, for instance, for the foreman to find out that the exhaust fan has failed. Report it at once yourself. You felt a bit shaky up there? 
You've been lucky this time, but report this ladder. It may collapse and kill one of your mates. One false step and it's your back that'll be broken. Your wife that'll get the news. An unfenced hatchway like this is dangerous. Report it. Of course, we don't have to report everything to the management. Some things the workman can put right himself. Someone with a heavy load could go for a skate in this, and well, all kinds of things could happen. Things like this, we can fix, for our safety and our mates. It takes a couple of minutes, perhaps, but it's a lot better than an ambulance ride. Clean it up. Pick it up. All offcuts and rubbish on the floor are dangerous. A workman could trip on this stuff and perhaps fall against a dangerous machine. Pick it up. Obvious, isn't it? Pick it up. Sweep it up. Swarf from a lathe. Razor-sharp coils and shavings of metal. Don't wait until somebody tells you to get rid of it. Do it yourself, but not with your hands. Remember, clean it up, pick it up, sweep it up. There are a lot of little things, like this, we can do to cut down our accident rate. It's just a matter of being safety conscious and automatically removing hazards. Like this. There are possible hazards wherever we may work, but every job can be made safe if you remember these six rules. Keep your workplace tidy. Always use the right tool for the job Wear your protective equipment. Keep dangerous machines guarded. Never use an unguarded machine. Report all defects. And six, correct unsafe conditions at once. If we do these things, develop safe working habits, we'll be going a long way to seeing that industry here in New Zealand is safe and healthy for all of us. For industry can be made safe wherever we may work.